guys, I am just dying to be canning something. I got old cinnamon girl sitting over there on the sidelines, waiting to be called into the game. And nothing is ripening enough that I can can large batches. I ran out of barbecue sauce, so probably a month or two ago, maybe six months, who knows? Time flies when you're having fun. And I thought, I'm gonna make a big old batch of barbecue sauce. Um, it's gonna be a big batch. And get that canned up, because Cinnamon Girl wants to work. And I'll give that out as gifts and share it with neighbors and friends. So, you know what they say. Okay, the base to this is ketchup. I told them this is gonna be a big batch. So I'm gonna pour it in my pot here. I'm gonna start with about eight cups of brown sugar. I know what you're thinking, but that's a, a liquid measure. I know, I don't measure anything anyway. So then I'm going to measure out, I think, I'll say four or five cups of molasses. Yeah, I buy in bulk. The top line says four cups. I filled it too full. We'll call it five cups of molasses. If you're wondering why I buy my molasses that way, several years ago, as I was looking for molasses online, I ordered one from Amazon because the price was really good. I got one case of gallons. I thought yeah, I would never use that much molasses in a million years. But now I use molasses in my homemade bread and I've started using it in a lot of other things. And it's also what you make homemade brown sugar with. I've not done that. Um, I need to compare the price and see if it's gonna be cost effective to do it that way. As long as I can buy pure cane brown sugar then I'll continue doing it that way. Next, I'm gonna add mustard. And then you can use dry or prepared. And I suppose if you wanna use like spicy brown mustard, whatever, you could do whatever you want. But here's a little tip I learned the hard way. When I was in high school, I made potato salad for a family picnic or something. And we didn't have any yeah, of the prepared mustard. So I got out the dried mustard and used the same amount of dried mustard as prepared. Whew. Mistake. You do not do that. For example, if it calls for one tablespoon of prepared mustard, you're going to use a teaspoon of dry mustard. Um, don't do what I did because man, I don't even, I think my mom ended up throwing it out. I, I can't remember. I think we tried to salvage it, but it was just too hot. So I've got a oh, little under a quarter cup of dry mustard and about three quarters of a cup of prepared mustard, just plain old yellow mustard. Now, as you can tell, this is just like any standard barbecue sauce that you make. These are the standard ingredients. Now I'm gonna get that all put in. Did you see what I did? I used a dry measuring cup to measure liquid. Don't call the cooking gods, cause I'll be in trouble. Okay, next you're gonna add some vinegar. Um, supposed to use apple cider vinegar. Guys, I've tried every way I can to like apple cider vinegar. I just don't care for it. So I'm going to use plain old vinegar. Oops. And this is a three quarter cup. I'm going to go ahead and start off with a cup and a half. of liquid vinegar in a dry cup. And I'm gonna go ahead and start mixing this up and try to get a few things put together before I put the spices in and I'll be back. Oh my 
almost forgot the Worcestershire sauce. Did I say that right? Let's put a three quarter cup that ran over a little bit in. Now I'm gonna start adding some spices and seasoning. I got about a third a cup of sea salt. I know that sounds like a lot, but remember this is a big batch. This is my onion powder. Now this is from last year. So it might, well, this just still smells really good. So two tablespoons of this. And I've got garlic powder, two tablespoons of this, but I'll tell you what guys, this is from some store bought that I uh, bought. You know, you can get the big bags of peeled garlic. extra because it doesn't have near the flavor as my homemade does. One tablespoon of chili powder, a heaping cup of smoked paprika. I love smoked paprika. And three tablespoons of black pepper. Now I like this really coarse ground black pepper for this kind of stuff. And I never put as much in. Now, if you want your um, barbecue sauce to have a kick or some heat, you can add um, cayenne pepper or red pepper flakes. We're babies here. There'll be no heat. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is get everything stirred in, start getting all my spices well mixed, everything dissolved, and we'll come back. Now, y'all know the way I cook. I put in kind of what's supposed to go in, and then I taste it. Every good cook tastes what tastes their cooking. All right, let me get this all mixed up and I'll be back. Okay guys, I've this has been simmering for a little while. I've got all everything dissolved and mixed well and it's good and hot almost looks like chocolate doesn't it but it's nice and thick and that's the way i like my barbecue sauce this is a sweet sauce um sweet and smoky i'll say and um, it's thick it's not real for people that like theirs a lot thinner um, you could add more water or vinegar uh, that's I just don't like a real watery sauce. I want it to stick to the meat So I have got my jars hot and let me get things set up. I did want to point out that I have it a couple cans of tomato paste as well as my tomato powder just in case um, I wanted it to be a little bit thicker a little bit more tomatoey, but I'm real happy with the way this turned out I'm gonna can it in pint jars. My dip, my jars are now in my dishwasher, just finishing up. So I'm gonna bring the hot jars over here and get the uh, sauce ladled into the jars. And my Tatler lids are on the back burner um, in hot water so that the uh, rubber rings will be soft. I'm gonna bring the hot jar over closer so I don't make quite a mess, as big a mess. Y'all know I'm pretty capable of doing that. So I'm ladling hot sauce into hot jars. I've got the water heating over there in a Cinnamon Girl, my all-American canner. And since my jar sauce is really thick, I'm going to leave it at the one inch line. And these things are hot. Okay, I'm gonna get my jars uh, filled. And then we'll come back. Okay, I've got all my jars filled. You want to make sure you go around the rim of the jars. Have a very clean, you want this to be clean so you get a good seal. And I'm using just a damp uh, paper towel for starters here. 
don't want any of that sticky sauce on the ring. Got hot lids and hot rings. I got to invest in something. Help pick those up. Those babies are hot. Now I just have a little fork I'm using. Again, these are my Tatler lids. Guys, I've heard there's a shortage on canning lids this uh, this summer. I belong to a couple canning sites, homesteading site uh, plate things, and everybody is talking about they can't find the lids they're looking for. I'm recommending if, if you run into that, check into Tatler. You can order them on Amazon, or even better yet, just go to tatler.com or tatlerlids.com. They usually have some kind of a special going. And um, I think you've heard me say before, I have several hundred of these. And I've used them many, many times. And once you get the past the learning curve, they're actually quite easy to use. Took me, took me a little while. All right, I've got all the lids on. Now I've got the rings. Now in a tattler, you don't tighten them down all the way. Just kind of put them on loosely because on a tattler, you tighten these when, when you bring them out of the canner. As you can see, I'm not really twisting them on. I'm just making sure that the threads are on there correctly. And I've got um, water heating up over in my canner, my All-American canner. And the one that I have that I call Cinnamon Girl, um, I can stack pints. So I'm going to put these in there and I'll come over and show you. Okay, this is, here's the six jars I have in my canner. There should be room for at least three, maybe four more. And then I'll put another layer on. And here's how much sauce I have left. So I've got more jars ready to go. So I'll get those and I'll keep on getting them canned up and I'll come hey back. Guys, I got in a little bit of a hurry, but I believe there's nine or 10, must be nine pints, 10 pints on the bottom because I have 15 pints of this finger looking good barbecue sauce. And then of course, um, if you're gonna stack them, you have to have one of the racks and then there's five pints on top. So now I'm going to put the, uh, the lid on and I'll show you again how you do um, an All-American can. Well, on the um, All-American canner, there is a little notch in the canner holding the camera with one hand, the lid and the other. So I hope you can see that. On the lid, there is an arrow right here. You're gonna line up the arrow and the notch. And before you do that, an All-American canner does not have a rubber seal. It's a metal on metal seal. So you wanna use olive oil, Vaseline. Some people use vegetable oil but lightly oil the beveled edge where they meet. They're gonna meet right here. I guess some people have actually not done that and, and their canners, they couldn't get their canners open. Anyway, you're gonna line up the arrow with the notch. You're gonna twist it and, until those are lined up. And then when you seal your canner, you bring these up opposites. Now, I just cleaned these while I was waiting on the sauce to warm up. You don't clamp them down tight. You just, just enough so they're gonna sit up there. And once you get all six of these on here, then you'll go around opposites again Tighten up, tighten it really snug. Okay, there's that notch and there's the arrow. I've got it tightened up 
And now what I'm gonna do is, um, the water's hot, but I'm gonna let this come up until the vent begun, begins to vent a steady stream of steam. And I'm gonna let that vent for 10 minutes. And once it gets there, we'll come back. Okay, it is kind of hard to see against my white background, but it has been venting a steady stream of steam. You notice I'm getting better at that. So I'm going to start timing that now for 10 minutes before I put the weight okay, on. Okay, it's been venting for 10 minutes. I'm gonna put my weight on. And once it starts to jiggle, then we'll come back. Okay, it's starting to jiggle. And also I have it on 15 pounds pressure, which I think my area is more like 12 to 13, but I can watch this gauge and I can listen to this uh, weight jiggle. So now I'm gonna turn the uh, temperature down or turn the gas down on my stove until this jiggles about four times a minute. This barbecue sauce needs to process for 20 minutes since it's pint. It'd be 25 if it was coarse. Um, once I get the, the, it regulated where it jiggles four times a minute and the pressure is steady, that's when you start the timing. If it quits, then you need to start all over again. So it's very important to stay with your canner while it's processing. Okay, the 20 minutes are up. I've turned off the heat. And now you need to let the canner come down to pressure on its own. You don't do anything to reduce the pressure. That's part of the processing. Leave the weight on. I'm gonna watch the gauge until it gets to zero. Um, and let it set at zero for a while. When I can take the weight off and no more steam um, releases, then I'll know that it's down to zero. And at that time, we'll come back and I'll show you a finished product. Hey guys, we're, the pressure's down to zero. It's still a little warm, but I could take that off. And now I'm going to remove the lid just like I put it on. I'll start with opposites and remove it. Okay, I'm gonna remove the lid and you want to start just like you put it on, loosen it pretty tight. Remember, anytime you're taking a lid off your pressure canner, you want to open it with the lid away from you because of the steam. You don't want steam blurring in your face. Okay. Remember when you remove the, the tattler, you screw it down when you remove the, the jar. These are perfect, these gloves. Okay, well, I'm gonna go ahead and get all of these out and we'll check back tomorrow morning, make sure they all seal. Okay, guys, it's the next morning. Look, Mona, I told you, it's a mess. <laughs> anyway, I had five pints that didn't seal. And I'm surprised, I really didn't think, I thought there would be more um, because the way it all, Oh, you know, sometimes the, the liquid will leak out. But I re-canned those. And to do that, you have to start totally over. So I dumped out the ones that didn't seal, got my jars ready, did everything. Anyway, what did I count? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, I think 15 pints. Did I mention? This stuff is finger looking good. That's why I didn't want to waste any. This stuff is good. I, I really like this barbecue sauce. Onward to the next project. See y'all.